Hey, this week we are looking at the KKSB 7-inch Raspberry Pi screen case. Yes. It's like a big, long name, <laughs> but basically... We've looked at a, a KKSB case before that has mm -hmm. the 13-inch screen. Yes. That thing is fantastic. But I need something a little more portable, a little more, like, fit in your bag and take it with you wherever you go kind of thing. Okay. But we're all fans of Raspberry Pi here, microcomputing, and uh, KKSB makes some of the greatest cases. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm just going to jump right down here. I've got everything I need. I've got oh, my... That that, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my trusty Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I've got a Canakit 2.5 amp power supply for the Raspberry Pi. And we've got the case. This is from KKSB. You can get one at cat5.tv slash pi, but this is not an advertisement. This is not late night television to try to sell you something. Oh, I, I want to show you. <laughs> I want to show you. But I want to make sure that you have access to it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the box and let's are, see. Are we unboxing here? We're not unboxing at the unboxing you camera? You know what? I'm just going to do it right here, Jeff. Oh my goodness. What? We've Changing got, it up. This is madness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Uh, okay, we've got a lint-free cloth for w wiping it down. We've got uh, the manual for a screen. So this is, of course, um, like the last one, it's a capacitive touch screen. And this okay. one is just a lot more, like, tiny. Oh. oh. But at the same time, it's got the same quality that you expect from KKSB. This is a... Uh, Let's see here if I can get in. Oh, it's Do like it. stuck to the tape. There we go. Yes, it works. This is a laser cut, powder coated, high grade steel case. It just looks amazing. Very nice. Right? So professional. There you go. These are uh, some of the best cases as far as the ruggedness and the mm. quality. Uh, they are just fantastic. The screen is 1024 by 600. Uh, it is touch screen and, uh, and it actually is going to, uh, well, it's going to connect to a Raspberry Pi right here. So Perfect. let's see what else is in the box and then let's oh, see oh, oh. about uh, what it takes to get this thing set up. So we've got cables here. Very important, very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, a nice short HDMI cable to oh, connect beautiful. the screen, nice. which is nice because it, rather than having oh, a big yeah. long length that you've got to wrap up, mm -hmm. comes with that one. We've got USB, which I don't see a power cord for this particular screen, mm -hmm. so I imagine that the USB is going to not only provide the touch screen capabilities, but also mm -hmm. the power to the 7 inch screen itself. Oh, okay. And then we've got uh, some screws there. Always fun. And that a little bit there, and an Allen key, and the mount plate, and, and yeah. we've got the uh, the actual stand as well for nice. for a level surface. Okay, so let's get into this guy right here. So we've got that's not the one. Let's see, we've got an Allen key right here. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to meet my friend Allen. Now let's pull this thing apart. All right. So would this be easier than building IKEA furniture so far? Definitely. Yes. I kind of like that it doesn't come in pieces. Mm -hmm. It comes assembled, so I can see exactly how it's going to go back together, Henry. Okay. I'd like to point out nobody's read the manual yet. <laughs> Was there a manual? <laughs> yeah. Well, the manual's it's for like the screen. Second thing. How how difficult is it going to be? What does the screen manual Jeff tell us there, Jeff? going to find out do not remove the screws. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't remove the screws on the back. A bit late for that. So, note, you need to first connect the USB cable before the HDMI cable. Otherwise, the backlight may cannot turn on. May cannot. <laughs> so that's for the screen itself. Yes. But had you done it the other way, you would have been like, oh, it doesn't we work. We're in, Jeff. We've got a couple of standoffs here. Excellent. I'm just pulling those off with my fingers. Wow, the uh, English on this is impressive. Oh, yeah? Huh. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will believe you there. <laughs> Jeff will translate our manual for us. There we are. Okay. okay. Let's get into our Raspberry Pi 3B+. All right. Fresh out of the box? Fresh out of the box. Nice. Come on now. What is that? There we are. <laughs> there All go. right. And that is going to go right in there, just perfect like fit. we expect from KKSB. It is just that, a beautiful, perfect fit. Standoffs are going to go back on. Huh. I have no clue what potentiometer is. Potentiometer. Oh. oh. 
Now we know. But close. <laughs> That does not look like that at all. <laughs> Tentiometer. <laughs> and apparently there's ghost problems. Oh, <laughs> don't ghost me. <laughs> Who are you going to call? There we are. Da, da, da. Well, it fits in there nice, quite nicely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, this won't work for a Raspberry Pi with the fan. You'd have mm. to use the heatsick. Now, why do you think that, Jeff? You said obviously. Well, so I want to know what makes it seem obvious. Well, it's a metal case and it doesn't have the hole for the fan. My dear friend. How? Where does the fan connect what? to, though? How do you mean? Power? No, no, no. Where are you going to put the fan inside? Oh, to that? screw it in? Yeah. Well, it just goes on top? Yeah, well, Would it I mean, be an this external is. external fan? Yeah, you could, but mm. wouldn't you do, couldn't you just have one that is built into the heatsink? I, I think it's okay. still meant for the, for the heatsink. I don't know. Okay. Like, I'm trying to think mm. of my Raspberry Pi at home with the fan, yeah, yeah. and I don't think the fan would fit. Because it's one that you screw into a yeah. case. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a little different. In that case, Jeff, what I would do, if you wanted to put a fan on here, yep. mm -hmm. is I would just put a little bit of 3M double-sided tape oh, on, that would work. on the fan, yeah, okay. just around oh. the edge of the fan, yep. and then you stick can actually stick the fan on here. Stick that's going to hold it nice and snug. Yep. Fair enough. If you don't have double-sided tape, a little bit of hot glue, that'll hold it there. Yep, that works. Yep. Okay, fair enough. All right, so let's uh, all right, put the case back on. There we are. We've got the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in its place. There we are. Line that up. You know, Looking professional. Oh, while yeah. You're doing that, there we go. I just want to say welcome back to Lyndon, who's in the chat room hey, Lyndon. for a very long time. Yeah, Aww. good to have you back, dude. All right, put those screws in. This is some exciting TV right here. I can almost just tell you, well, there's screws to hold this all together. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't necessarily have to put them together live on the air, but I can. You, you, you pay attention to those small details. Those little it's, details. It's the <laughs> little riveting, details. Yes. riveting nature of Cat5. It is. Uh -huh. Look at those screws being... <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, folks. 10 out of 10. And because we're best. live, I can't even speed it up. That's right. You know? <laughs> There we are. And you just kind of feel your way with these big long screws. Right. And get that. I, I just feel so excited, there we though, go. about all the potential uses for this. <laughs> yeah, so you know. with this, I mean, as I'm looking at it, my first thought is a, a photo frame. True. You don't want to be perfect for that, but a smart photo frame. Yeah. How about that? True, true. Something that connects to a server and mm -hmm. grabs your photos from the server yep. and rotates through them. Or could you even write a script for the Pi to pull it from, say, like your Facebook or Instagram account? Sure. There you, you go. Know? Yeah. And that way, as you go live with new photos, they update instantly. You can have there it uh, search through your photos for certain tags yeah. in the descriptions. Mm -hmm. See, that there would work are. for, say, family That's all there is to abroad. It, folks. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. Maybe like a, an elderly parent or grandparent that doesn't have Facebook mm -hmm. that wants to get constant updates of photos. The thing yeah. to remember with this, Jeff, is it is a full Linux computer. That is true. So nothing to it. It's, it's literally Linux. So, and it's a computer. It's not just a screen. It can right? do anything. Well, yeah. Kind of. All right. So then finally, we've got this guy on the back. Mm -hmm. Just going to screw that together. More screws. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But even if like, you're a small business or something, and you set up a kiosk or... Oh, exactly. I like that idea. If you just want like a little tablet to draw on. <laughs> That's right. It could be so many things. What I do like is that it has the screw holes on the base mount as well so that you can secure it. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on what you're using it for, it's not going to move around. So what Jeff is talking about, as I so sophisticatedly put this together for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm doing this kind of on the side as the guys are talking. So, I mean, you can imagine it's not very difficult to assemble. Right. I'm doing my thing. What Jeff's talking about is, if you were to use this in a business environment or a school environment, mm -hmm. you don't want someone walking off with it. Yeah. And it actually Spirit has screw down. holes. Perfect. So we've got three screw holes. We can actually mount this on the counter in such a way that nobody can walk off with it. There you go. Yeti Wizard asks, how is this display different than the stock Pi display? So if you get the stock Pi display or anything else, is it capacitive touch? Ooh. This screen is, I mean, this is the, uh, the WaveShare touch screen. Mm -hmm. So we know that WaveShare makes some excellent screens. I'm not going to 
I, I've got two more screws to put in, but I just awesome. want to kind of expedite things. It's solid. So, um, but what we're looking at here Let's is, get that box out of the way. yeah, this Maybe. guy. All right, so we've got USB for power, and mm -hmm. that's going to go in here. That also Perfect. gives us the touch capability. Now, awesome. did you do it in proper fashion? Well, I plugged it in first, Jeff. Did no, you do the USB matter. before the HDMI? You did. It doesn't you matter. Did. Excellent. I can confirm. Doesn't matter. Yeah, power's not the instructions. on. <laughs> power's not on. Fire. My heart. <laughs> oh no! You did it backwards. <laughs> Explodes in my hands. All that's left is the little stand. That's awesome. Here we go. All right, so some would look at this and say, okay, that's a little bit janky because you've got these cables, cables sticking out the side, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. There's something that I love about that. It'll work with any SBC that you can connect to it. That is true. So nice. keep in mind, if you want to do Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, like I'm doing here today, mm -hmm. it's going to work perfectly. But what if you want to go with like a, an Asus Tinker board, which oh. is going to fit this case too? Cool. That's right, right yeah. Um, you're not limited to the I.O., yeah. You're not limited to the uh, capabilities of a particular okay. proprietary cable that only works on Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. right? So there you have it. That's nice. all there is to assembly. Now, in the instructions, there is a little bit of code that you need to add to Raspbian. There's a config that you need to add. It's right here. So you just yep. open up the file the, uh, on, on your boot partition mm -hmm. and add four lines of code. Oh, just that's it. In, in Notepad. Five? Yep. Oh, five. It yeah. has instructions right there. Yep. So there it is. That's all set. So hold on to that because you will need the instructions to add that little bit of code. Mm -hmm. And all that does is it sets the resolution to 1024 by 600. It sets it to uh, HDMI mode 87. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, and it uh, sets the position of the screen and the overscan so that you don't have black borders around on the screen. Uh, okay. right? But more importantly, it forces you to read the manual. There you go. <laughs> Those five lines. Yeah. The five lines in the manual, that's all you need. But it make works. sure you plug in the USB first. Otherwise, as Henry explained, it will explode. Yes. <laughs> Got to make sure it's nice and clean. These are the KKSB 7-inch screen cases. Nice. I, I can't really give you the impression that I have of it other than, like, this is rugged. This feels, I mean, this is... Well, it is, feels professional. It looks professional. It's right? yeah. much more... Oh, well, it's very solid. ...solid. It's n there's no plastic mm -hmm. seen here. Um, the cables, uh, you can tuck them in as best you can, but y you can also... You just get, like, an L connector, right? Like an L... Yeah, you could do those, that. Minimize it. I don't mind the cables because I like the fact that I can use this for anything. And you can, there in you fact, go. because it's full-sized HDMI, mm -hmm. unplug the Raspberry Pi and use this as a screen for any HDMI device mm -hmm. and then go. plug it back in again and you're back to using it as a Raspberry Pi. Nice. So it is not compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 out of the box and that is because Raspberry Pi 4 has a different placement of the HDMI right. outputs plus oh, okay. it's a micro HDMI versus uh, uh, two of them versus a full-sized HDMI. Oh. So it's not that you couldn't fandangle something to make it work if you've got the ability to cut steel you would be able to punch a little hole to be able to make it so that it works with a Raspberry Pi 4. Mm -hmm. Th there's no limit to, like, the screen will work with it. Mm -hmm. yep. But the case itself, because it's built for Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and before, um, that's the type of output for the HDMI that the case is compatible with. Okay. So that's what we're up against with the Raspberry Pi 4. But it's not to say that you couldn't do a little bit of nice hardware hacking to make it work. Sounds like a challenge. Mm -hmm. Let's we, make, we can hack make it happen. Make it so then we can like control a drone or something. Ooh. Let's just order like Do pizza so or things. something. Push it no, no, let's get on that code. It's a full computer, guys. So, Real. I mean, come up with some ideas. Let us know how you would use this. Is it a kiosk? Is it a little computer to be playing games on? Is it something that you want to be able It's touchscreen. So, hey, you could use that. I could install um, Google Remote Desktop on that, mm -hmm. and I could control Telestream Wirecast using a touch screen there you go. on a Raspberry Pi. I like that. In real time. Now you could use a USB uh, to hook up to say a webcam. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you could use that for video conferencing. That's true too. Yeah, that would be a great little video conferencing unit. Can I get like yeah. a little command and control center for your house? Yeah. Or your basement? There you go. Yeah, I'm sure Bo from Ameridroid <laughs> would come up with something cool. That guy just like yeah. zombifies everything. Set to it. Set to it. <laughs> All right, folks, get yours at cat5.tv slash pi. We've got some links there in order to, uh, to take a look at those. And uh, we've got the purchase links and more information as well.